sport of track and field. So there's a long story behind that because I struggled academically. Uh, so the scholarship was almost taken away from me. So I had to get my grades up, and I did that, and I, I, I attained the scholarship to the University of Illinois. So I ran track for the University of Illinois, and while there, I majored in speech communications. So that was my major. My main goal going into Illinois was to make sure that uh, when I left, I'd be remembered, right? I want to be remembered. I want to set a legacy so if my name is mentioned on campus, they know exactly who I am. So after four years, left the university, I was a nine-time uh, Big Ten champion, uh, four-time NCAA All-American. I was Big Ten Athlete of the Week uh, a bunch of times. Uh, I made two Olympic trial finals in the year 2000 and the year 2004. Uh, I, uh, had a lot of success athletically, and because of that success in college, once I graduated, it led to a professional career. So I was sponsored by Nike Athletics, and my event for track and field was 400 hurdles, right? So that was my thing. I was the best at the 400 hurdles. In college, I did a lot of things, and I was really good at a lot of things, but professionally, there's a lot of top athletes, so I have to pick the main, the best sport that's gonna allow me to make the most amount of money. So the 400 hurdles was the thing. Ran for Nike uh, Athletics for three years, and then I ran for the Santa Monica Track Club for another two years. And in the year 2004, I retired from the sport of track and field. I made another Olympic trial finals. But over the course of five years, I was able to travel the world. So I've been to uh, you know, Yokohama, uh, Croatia, I've been everywhere. Italy, I've been all over the world traveling and running because of athletics. So for me, I understood that, you know, now that I retired, I want to keep it athletic. So I want to continue to do something athletically, and I didn't want to sit in some cubicle and have someone over my shoulder telling me what to do. So I started my own company, Fast Sports Performance, and we started training athletes. Now, we didn't have a building. We didn't have a fancy looking place. We just trained athletes outside. And I was in California doing this for almost 10 years. So we're training athletes, we're getting them better. Then I have the opportunity to work with uh, one of the most uh, talented draft class, classes in the NFL uh, today. Had the opportunity, if you know football, work with LaShawn McCoy, who's here with the Bucks now, he's a stud. Work with Marcus Colston. Uh, and a, a, you know, Ryan Matthews and a bunch of guys that got drafted in the first round making millions of dollars. So I had the opportunity to train them with speed development and assist in their strength development routine as they got ready for the NFL Combine. Long story short, they went to the NFL Combine and they ran fast, right? So a lot of that was attributed to the work that I did on a daily basis uh, with them, running mechanics training and video analysis uh, Etc. So those guys ran very fast, and then my business kind of took off. So we said, you know what, We're, let's start a track club too. So we train athletes in all sports, right? So we had baseball, we had soccer teams, softball, vo uh, volleyball. We had a lot of teams, and remember, I don't have a building, but I'm in California, and I'm coming to you, and I'm training, right? So you can compete at a high level. So we did that, and we did it so well uh, that my wife decided, you know what, let's move from California, all right, because the cost of living was, it was very expensive in California. So we moved, we came here, we started over. We started over from zero, right? But in order to be successful in my field as a performance coach, you understand that you live by a certain set of rules that you hustle and you grind every day. So we hustle. And we grind every day, seeking out clients that have no idea who I am, but getting them in front of our website, getting them material so they can look us up. And over time, right, we began to get clients. And in about six months, we turned zero into a bunch, and we were able to get our own facility. So we had our own facility, and we're training athletes, and we're doing great. We're doing so good, we got the number one recruit in the Tampa Bay area. 
James Wilder Jr. was my was my first top client when I was here in Tampa, Florida. Number one recruit in the country. Then we had uh, Aaron Murray. We had Orson Charles. These are guys that are playing for SEC programs, and they're the leaders of their schools. And we helped those guys stay in shape so that when they went back to school, they'd be ready to go and ready for the season. So these guys were so ready for the season, their coach at the University of Georgia called me up one day, and he said, these are his words, how much money do you make? So he wanted to know how much money I made so we can match it, so he can add more to it, because he wanted me to be the associate strength and conditioning coach for that program and the head speed coach for the Bulldogs football program. So we, my wife and I, we flew out to Athens, Georgia, and we liked what we saw. We saw the entire program. We saw all the athletes, how they trained, the level of focus and dedication. We saw the facilities, and they were really nice. So we decided, you know what? Even though we just got to Tampa and we're just getting rolling, we're going to shut it down because SEC, all right, or Division I football experience is priceless. So not only that, we left for the University of Georgia, they also saw my wife, and they said, you know what, we wanna hire her too. At the time, my wife and I were certified through NASM, National Academy of Sports Medicine, for corrective exercise and performance enhancement. Those were our certifications. We were working on our master's degree in human movement science at the time. So, we get to Georgia, and three seasons is the length of my stay at the University of Georgia. So I was there for three seasons, and we made, uh, we were two and one in our bowl games. We won the SEC East, and uh, after three seasons, I left, and when I left the University of Georgia, I had a master's degree in human movement science. So I hold a master's in human movement science. Uh, I have the highest level of certification through the CSCS as a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Right, so those are also certifications that I have. So when I came back to Tampa, now instead of holding two certifications, I got a master's degree and I got the biggest certification of them all. So we were able to come back to the University of Georgia and build my business from zero yet again to a bunch. We did it in like six months. We got our own facility, we started all over again. But once again, the foundation and how we do what we do, because we hustle, we grind. We don't wait for people to come to us, we're coming to you. And we did that every single day, we still do it today. So I'm in front of you guys right now. So we hustle, we grind, and we did that. And we have our own facility again, and we're, we're, we, are, we have some success. There are ups and downs in the business, but we have our own success. More importantly, no one's over my shoulder telling me what to do. That was a goal of mine, to make sure that I'm in charge of my own destiny, right? So with that, when I left the University of Georgia, I saw inside of their program that they also had mentors. They had character education. And they had hired someone on their staff to talk to the athletes every single day about how to navigate through life, how to handle uh, girls, how to handle social, social uh, aspects of being a co collegiate athlete, right? So they helped those guys understand what are the consequences if I do this? What are the consequences if I do that so I have to make better decisions? So I understood that when I come back to Tampa, I want to find and align myself with an organization just like it. So I align myself with a company, Positive Coaching Alliance, and just like I'm in front of you today, I do this all the time, right? We stand in front of a group of student athletes and we help them in regards to character and understanding what it takes to be successful. We share workshops on social media because many of our student athletes they eliminate themselves the recruiting process because of what they post on social media. It's done. I remember being at a, board, at a meeting at the University of Georgia. Every coach that's on the staff of the football program is in this meeting. And every time we have a meeting, we're looking at social media. And they actually have a team of individuals that they hire to monitor social media of everyone that we're recruiting. So you see a lot of signs on the walls in this room but in our room, there was a bunch of recruits all across the board. And then you see X's across names. And those X's didn't necessarily mean all of a sudden they fell off athletically. Many times those X's were, we saw something on social media, we didn't like it, we don't want to be aligned with that individual, so we're not recruiting that kid anymore. 
So I knew it, that it was important because a lot of our kids don't understand how social media can impact your life, not just athletically, but beyond athletics. So I speak with the Positive Coaching Alliance. We help kids every single day and we connect with the greatest. And then I have my program, training my athletes, and we have an after school program. We pick up kids, younger kids, and we teach them character and leadership development. The goal is connecting athletes, connecting kids to greatness. That's what it's all about. Not just your age, but we're talking six years old, kindergarten all the way up. So that they have a firm foundation and they understand what it takes at an early age, right, for me to reach my goals and be successful. So, with that being said, in a nutshell, that's pretty much how I got to do what I do. Any questions? Mm -hmm. um. Uh, to become a sport performance coach, understand this, there's no certification necessary. Anybody can be a sport performance coach. They can hold that title, right? So uh, uh, someone on the street can say one day, you know what? Uh, I know a couple of kids, I'm a sports coach, let's coach them up. Anybody can do it. However, if you want to be effective and do it, if you want to build a business and do it, it's going to take a lot more than just having that idea of, hey, this is what I want to do today, right? And if you want to be taken seriously, if you want to have high-end clients, right, that are competing and are trying to play at the professional level or clients that are trying to attain scholarships, it takes a lot more. So there's a few steps. There's an initial certification that you can have, and I started out with a certification called the NCCPT, and it's the National Council for Certified Personal Trainers. That's where I started. That's a baseline certification. You do not need a bachelor's degree, degree to have it. Once I had the NCCPT, then I went to the NASM, the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Once I got there, the NASM, the two certifications that I captured there was performance enhancement. They call it PES. So that's when you're training athletes. Performance enhancement. And the second one was corrective exercise. So they call that the CES. So the PES and the CES. Corrective exercise is for when our athletes break down and they get injured. How do we help them get back to 100%? Now, once I got those two certifications, in order to get the big certification, I have to have, to have a master's degree. So I have the master's degree in human movement science, which qualifies me for the CSCS which is the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist. That's the CSCS, all right? Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist. So there's a, there's a lot that's required. If you say that you really want to do this, right, and you really want to be successful and make a living out of it, there's a lot required in order to do so, all right? 